Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at the three official EF to RF lens mount adapters currently made by Canon. This is a video, quite honestly, I had planned on making a long time ago, but unfortunately, and in case you haven't noticed, these adapters are rather hard to come by right now. They are always backordered, out of stock, unavailable. So it took a while for me to receive all three adapters, and obviously I needed some time to use each one as well to understand their relative uh, pros and cons of each. So we're finally getting around to making this video. The most affordable adapter currently made by Canon is this one. This is just the uh, basic EF to RF lens mount. It doesn't have any additional features, no bells and whistles. It just simply allows you to attach a Canon EF lens onto an RF mount like this EOS R6 or a camera like the R5, which is what I'm currently filming on, a C70, or the recently announced R3 and additional future EOS R cameras as well. Now, something important to understand here about all three adapters is that they actually do a lot more than just change the hardware. These adapters facilitate communication between the camera body and the lens, autofocus, aperture, and most importantly, especially on uh, EF lenses that have optical image stabilization, it allows the new in-body image stabilization system that you will find in cameras like the R5 and the R6 to work in tandem with the optical image stabilization in the lens. The adapter in the middle here, this is known as the Control Ring Adapter. This adapter currently retails for $199 in the United States, which makes it twice as much as the basic adapter. Now, if you're not familiar with the Control Ring, it is a new dial Canon has added to all of their new RF lenses. This is uh, an RF 70 to 200 millimeter F4 lens here, and it has a Control Ring down here at the end of the lens housing, and it's painted white to blend in with the body, so hopefully it won't be confused with the focus throw and with the, the telephoto zoom here. It has kind of a clicky, kind of notched feeling to it. Very satisfying <laughs> in a way. I believe by default this is set to ISO, if I remember right, but that can be customized. You can assign white balance, you can assign shutter speed, you can assign uh, you know, what type of focusing mode you want to be using. There's so many different options. The control ring on this adapter provides the exact same functionality as the control ring on the lens. It could be programmed just the same and it has a very similar like sound and feel to it. It effectively upgrades these older lenses to perform like the newer RF models. Okay, so now let's take a look at the third option, which is the most expensive, and that is the adapter down here. This adapter is more unique. There's actually a lot more going on with this adapter compared to the other two because this one has a filter inside of it that actually slides in and out of the adapter. The model that you see here, this one has a circular polarizer on the inside of it, and this model retails for $299. And then there is a separate version, that one retails for $399. And with that one, you get a variable neutral density filter. Now to clarify, if you buy the drop-in filter adapter with the circular polarizer, you may add on the variable ND filter separately or you can do the reverse. You can buy the adapter with the variable ND and then add on the circular polarizer. Both the circular polarizer and the variable ND drop-in filters have a label here on the outside so you know which filter is currently inside the adapter when you have it mounted. And they have scroll wheels uh, here on the top. Not sure if you can hear that, but they have some tiny little wheels up here that allow you to not only uh, adjust the polarity of the circular polarizer, but to also control how much density is being applied when using the variable ND. On a positive note, the basic adapter is the most affordable. It does one thing and it does it well. On the downside, but actually this may be a positive for some people, is the fact that this adapter does not have a control ring. It does not have drop-in filters. With the control ring adapter, on a positive note, personally, I've warmed up to the control ring. I wasn't sure what I was going to think about it at first and if it was actually going to prove useful, but for me, I enjoy using it. And it's nice because then you're able to make that change you know, while you are looking through the viewfinder of the camera. You don't have to take the camera down, start pushing buttons, you know, digging around in the menu, trying to assign something. You can just assign it to the control ring and do it right there. On the downside with this adapter, well, one would be cost. I mean, again, this one costs twice as much as the basic adapter. And personally, I think that's probably a little much. I think a more reasonable price for this would have been around, say like 149, 159, especially if you're not 100% sold on the idea of a control ring, and it may not be something you get a lot of value out of. But there is one important usability thing here to be aware of. The ring is all the way back here 
you know, it's nearly flush with the camera body. So when you are, you know, say using your camera like this, you have to, you know, adjust the control ring back here at the back of the lens, which kind of makes the, the camera feel a little bit top heavy or a little front heavy, especially when you're using a heavier lens. The control ring on the RF lens, on the other hand, is out here in front. So when you were looking through the viewfinder like so, the control ring is out here towards the front of the lens. At least it is with this 70 to 200 here, which gives you more grip and it feels more balanced and not quite as you know top heavy this way. And then unfortunately the control ring mount adapter only gets more awkward if you have some type of L bracket or a or a rig around the camera. This L bracket here is made by uh, Pro Media Gear. This is actually my favorite L bracket for both the R5 and the R6. I reviewed a few different L brackets if you'd like to check out that video. But the problem is, is that when you have this additional hardware around the camera body, it only makes it harder to kind of, you know, get down in here and to be uh, making adjustments to the control ring. So the question I think you have to ask yourself, if you're trying to make a decision between the control ring adapter and the basic adapter, by the way, you could buy two of these for the same price as the control ring model here, is how useful do you really see this control ring being for you and your workflow. If you primarily shoot handheld, I can see the control ring being useful because then you're able to adjust ISO on the fly. You could adjust your exposure compensation on the fly or your focus method, whatever, uh, whatever it is you want to configure because there's so many different options you can assign to this ring. For everyone else though, especially like more methodical photographers, and by methodical, I mean people who lock their camera down on a tripod, like an architectural photographer, a landscape photographer, people who primarily spend most of their time behind the camera anyway, using the, the screen back here. I don't know. I mean, the control ring may not prove to be as useful for you. Personally, I like having a an additional point of control. I like having ISO assigned to this because especially when I'm shooting video like this video here, uh, looking at a monitor, I could just reach out and change the ISO to affect my exposure, similar to like turning a variable ND or something like that. But for some photographers and filmmakers, I could easily see this control ring being more trouble than it's worth. And you could accidentally bump this and change it. And, you know, in order to work around that, you can just assign no function to it. But if you have no function assigned to it, well, there's no point really in paying twice as much for this adapter compared to the basic one. As for the pros and cons of the drop-in filter adapter, well, there are quite a few. On a positive note, and I think this is really the main selling point of these drop-in filter adapters, is the fact that you always have a filter between the lens and the camera body, which means that, say, you were to change lenses. If you were to take this lens off, grab another EF lens, put it on, well, you have the same filter setup you had before. You still have a circular polarizer back here, or you still have a variable ND. And from a usability perspective, this is about as close as you can possibly get to the experience of using built-in variable NDs on a camera like the Canon C70, where you can just push a button on the camera. This is about as close as you can get because it's always there. It always lives between the lens and the, and the camera. And all you have to do is just turn this wheel back here in order to change densities. There's also the added benefit of not having to stack filters, which is common when using a circular polarizer and a solid ND. Usually you have to put both out here, which may actually help, especially some of you who shoot a uh, wide angle or shooting at say 16 millimeter full frame, because then you don't have as much bulk. You don't have as much stuff sticking off the front of the lens down here. Also, these drop-in filters are smaller. They're lighter. There's less bulk, less weight, less stuff out here on the front of your lens. And speaking of the front of the lens, you also don't have to worry about step-up rings. You don't have to worry about different diameters of filter. Another positive, there are other companies besides Canon who are beginning to manufacture these drop-in filters. For example, there is Kalari Vision. They recently announced a line of uh, solid NDs, which is great for people who prefer using solid NDs. And they also recently announced a swirly uh, bokeh kind of filter, special effect filter that you can use. You can also check out, I will put a link to that below. And then finally, the last positive I'll share is the fact that you don't have to worry as much about mechanical vignette when shooting wide angle on the lens, because when you have a circular threaded filter out here in the front and you shoot full frame wide angle, say somewhere around 16 or 15 millimeters, sometimes, depends on the thickness of the filter you are using, sometimes that creeps into your image and further darkens the corner. Whereas if the filter is back here behind the lens, you don't have to worry about that. All right, so obviously there's a lot of positive things going for the drop-in filter adapter, but there are some very notable cons to it as well. 
that you should be aware of. The first negative, and honestly, I'm really surprised this is actually a problem, and I'm surprised that Canon is doing this, is the fact that when you buy this drop-in filter adapter and you choose between the circular polarizer or the variable ND, the adapter only comes with that filter, which means if you needed to change, if you no longer wanted the circular polarizer or you no longer wanted the variable ND, which is going to happen, it's a very realistic thing, you have to take the filter out but then when you do, you're left with this gaping hole in the side of the adapter here, which means light can get in, which means dust can get in. The only way to seal this thing and to close it off is to buy the separate clear filter that Canon also rather conveniently sells, but separately. You have to pay $129 for that clear filter. So there's unfortunately a hidden cost with this adapter. It's not actually $299 or $399 but $129 more than whichever model you choose because you are going to need that clear filter. Another negative, and again, I'm kind of surprised Canon designed uh, the product this way. This drop-in filter adapter comes with the exact same case that the other two adapters use, which is just this, you know, kind of cheap uh, Velcro case here to hold the adapter, but they don't provide anything to hold the filters when you take the filters out or you're swapping filters. So not only do they not provide the clear filter that you really need in order for this adapter to actually be useful. But if you're changing filters, I mean, you know, what are you gonna do with this? Because this is not protected in any way. It doesn't have a case. I guess you put it back in here. I don't know, or you have to buy a separate case for it, but it just seems like the kind of thing that could easily break or scratch because again, for whatever reason, Canon doesn't provide anything. And then last but certainly not least is the fact that this drop-in filter adapter and the other two adapters for that matter are only compatible with EF lenses. And I know that may sound like an obvious point, but I mean, just think about this for a second. If you were to eventually start upgrading to RF lenses and you know, I don't know about you, but I definitely want to because Canon is coming out with newer, better lenses like this small 70 to 200 here, which is just awesome. And they're coming out with newer lenses all the time. Well, eventually you're going to want to upgrade. And when you do, and again, to state the obvious, these RF lenses mount directly to the camera. You don't need an adapter. So the big question here, the main takeaway I think is, you have to ask yourself, how long do you plan to continue using your older EF lenses on these new Canon cameras? Are you planning on uh, selling off all your old EF glass as quickly as possible in order to buy newer RF models? If you are, well, for now, just a basic adapter may be all you need. If you are someone who is using both EF and RF lenses and you like using the control ring on an RF lens, well, I think the adapter with the control ring is a solid choice. Or if you are someone who has invested a lot of money in EF glass, you have a bunch of EF lenses and you are in no hurry to be upgrading to RF, or perhaps you're someone who, hey, who doesn't like to save money, right? Because these older EF lenses, you're able to buy them on eBay, Gear Focus, all kinds of places today for considerably less than similar uh, RF lens options that are out there. But even though Canon has publicly stated that they're not designing or engineering any new EF lenses, they're continuing to manufacture older models, but they're just not designing any new ones. All the new lenses are going to be RF from this point forward. That doesn't discount the fact that there are plenty of EF lens options out there. And it's, it's a lens system that still, in my opinion, has a lot of life left in it. One final tip that I wanna share with you, and this gets back to what I was saying at the very beginning of this video, is the fact that these adapters are always out of stock. They are always back ordered. So if you are considering upgrading or buying a camera like the R6, the R5, the C70, or maybe that new uh, R3, which is going to be coming out, and you know that you're going to need an adapter, well, I would order the adapter as quickly as possible, maybe even before the camera, because you're not, if you have a bunch of EF glass, this actually affected me. I got the R5, but I didn't have uh, an adapter. I had all these EF lenses and I couldn't even use the camera for a while because I had to wait on one of these adapters to get here. So if this is something you're planning on doing and you're thinking about just get the adapter as quickly as possible because Honestly, it may take a little while to get to you. And by the way, just be careful when you're shopping around and make sure that you check the price and make sure that it's actually correct because I have seen in a few places where these adapters have been, there's a little bit of price gouging going on where people have been selling used adapters for more than the MSRP because they are a bit of a hot commodity right now, unfortunately. So, you know, unless you need one immediately and you don't mind overpaying for it, 
just make sure that you're that you're paying uh you know the correct price and if you know in order to make sure i mean just use the links that i posted below in the video description they go to reputable places where you can order one of these adapters and not overpay for it and in full disclosure those are affiliate links of course which means i would receive a small credit uh, in return for uh, your purchase if you were to buy one through that. But that credit goes directly towards funding the content that you see on this channel. Additionally, a little bit of self-promotion here, but if you are someone who shoots video using either the EOS R5 or R6 and you shoot in C-Log or C-Log 3, I recently released a collection of uh, Exposure Correction Rec. 709 LUTs. This collection has uh, 60 customized Rec. 709 LUTs in it that take that C-Log3 and C-Log footage, converts it to Rec. 709, and gives you control over exposure. So if your footage is overexposed or underexposed, you can be fixing those uh, discrepancies at the moment that the footage is converted to Rec. 709. So something I create for me in my work, and I think they're great, and I'm not just saying that, I use them all the time. If you want more information about them, I'll link to them below, and I'll put a link up here as well. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time.